everybody, and welcome to the Archery House, uh, the home of the British Institute of Professional Photography. Uh, today we've got um, Simon Nicholson, who's the commercial manager for the UK uh, for 3X Salmon Photo Value. And I've asked Simon to come on. Uh, I've known Simon a very, very long time. He was my managing director when we were both worked at Spice Holefield. And one thing that Simon really, really liked was a spreadsheet. So uh, I've asked him to come on and, and talk about cash flow because over this next few uh, months and weeks, um, obviously cash flow is so important and he's going to give us some tips and tricks and also just show us, for those who don't do a cash flow forecast, it's probably one of the most important things you should be doing if you're not. So, Simon, if you can just give us a bit of a bio on yourself and let people know, as I said, I knew you from Managing Director at Spicer Holefield, which was some good old days, which seemed a million years ago from today. Yes, we, um, I, of course, I came to Spicers because I, I sold my, uh, my own business to Spicers uh, and came to run the sales force where we, we, uh, we, we got together. Uh, and from there, uh, I kind of went on to do some uh, interim work, which is where I kind of got uh, parachuted into companies uh, to fix them. So some of those companies uh, were in uh, the Czech Republic, in Germany. Uh, running projects up to around 45 million euro um, in, in terms of sorting companies out. Uh, but I think probably my most um, relevant sort of experience to this discussion is um, uh, I was running a business of my own in, in, in the world of furniture uh, when the financial crash came 2007 to 2009. Um, and uh, we lost 75% of our sales overnight. So we literally, you know, cash dried up dramatically very quickly uh, so whilst it's a different situation it, 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 it has the same sort of feel about it uh, if, if anything it feels harder and deeper than than the financial time so I think it's going to go on you know much longer yeah which is quite quite worrying and uh, and I think for as you know you know we, we well not that any of our members that I'm aware of have a turnover of 30, 45 million euros but but certainly, uh, the the uh, our membership is kind of broken up into two camps: self-employed or small limited companies. We've already kind of done an interview with John Scully, who's an accountant, uh, talking about what the government the the proposal has been and uh, and and how that will work for us. For the information that we've got up till now, which kind of changes daily anyway. But uh, as I said before, I think for both those companies, or for any company, or even an individual, or somebody just running a household, then uh, cash flow and cash flow projections and understanding fixed overheads is, is, is absolutely imperative. Yeah, certainly. Um, and uh, what, I, what I've done is I've prepared um, a cash flow um, that we can run through in terms of what it what would look like normal trading for a photographer. Yeah. Uh, and what I've then done on the second tab is I've actually kind of uh, amended that to what I would call kind of a, a Corona effect. That is, you know, what, what, what happens in a business when the sales dry up very quickly, but the, the, the costs continue. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, we can kind of go on and look at, well, how, you know, what will you do to fix it? Uh, because the thing about a cash flow is that um, um, it's a moment in time uh, and uh, you record this information so that uh, you have some good uh, information uh, to make decisions but it doesn't mean you can't change it uh, and change it for the better. So, Just, well, so if, if it's all right with you, I'll, I'll crack on if that's if Yeah, that's please right. do, yeah. I might okay, ask some stupid you. questions along the way, if that's all right. Sure. And the, the, the corona effect, so we're not talking about beer there either, are we? We're actually talking about the... Uh... No. <laughs> okay, so you should be able to see um, uh, the spreadsheet on, uh, on the screen there. Yeah. Uh, so it, it effectively, the way that a spreadsheet works, sorry, a, a cash flow works, is that um, what I, the way I tend to build my uh, cash flows is, first of all, uh, and you can see up here at the top, uh, I like to kind of put in three months of historical references. So that's literally pulling out your uh, bank statements, uh, and it's it's looking backwards in time. Uh, and the reason we do that is that uh, both in terms of uh, certainly in terms of costs, you sometimes get reoccurring transactions that happen quarterly. Yeah. Uh, so it's important to catch those. Uh, and by recording one complete quarter, uh, that helps, uh, first of all, identify those reoccurring costs and also um, will help you catch those things that only happen once a quarter. Mm -hmm. 
Now this top part here, as you can see, we're kind of running in from uh, uh, December uh, 2019 right the way through to December 2020. So why so long? Well, um, apart from the historical information we just talked about, um, certainly my view of the world, uh, and since I built this, it's probably become even more uh, relevant, is I, I think that this problem that we're experiencing now, I, I think it's going to be pretty deep and pretty long. So what I'm suggesting here in terms of um, uh, uh, what we've got here is, is we've recorded our sales are as they are now. And when we get onto the next sheet, we'll see just how uh, that's going to impact. Okay. So on the left-hand side here, we've got income. Uh, and um, I put this in as jobs one to 20. Now, uh, for a wedding photographer, that might be 20 weddings that you're doing. Uh, for another photographer, it might be uh, a portrait, a passport, um, you, you know, any number of kinds of jobs. Uh, so you can, in this section here, you can just label those up exactly as you want them uh, to be. Uh, and you've recorded your historical sales on the left here. Now, histori the historical ones um, at this stage, if you just want to record one number for December, to be fair on sales, that's fine. Uh, it's more important that when you get into March, looking out uh, through to December, that you record a little bit more detail. Mm -hmm. uh, as we drop down, this green line here and all the green areas in this spreadsheet have a formula in, and they'll take care of the calculations. So this really just tops up uh, how much business you're doing in each month. Um, and we can see there, um, because this is running from January through to December, this photographer, and I'll just highlight that, uh, let me just, uh, well, sorry, they're locked down. There's about £80,000 worth of business here. That's the kind of size of business that I based this on. Yeah. Uh, we then drop down to expenses. Uh, and in expenses, I've kind of put everything in there that I think are probably relevant to uh, a, a regular photographer, whether it's rent or mortgage, whether it's business rates, gas, electric, uh, social media, advertising, uh, paying for a CRM. Um, programs like Pro Select, where you know you may pay for it monthly uh, for your uh, IPS sales. Uh, recorded all of those, and then down here at the bottom, I've left about uh, six or seven spare uh, ones because there's you can then it's bound to be the case that a photographer has something a little bit different. Yeah. Once again, the spreadsheet just totals all all of your expenses, uh, and the next line down, this line here. Uh, it shows what what is called net flow to the bank. Now, what I mean by that is that is the difference between your income uh, and your outgoings. Uh, in some cases, in, in one month, if you've earned more than you, you you spent, you have a positive income going to the bank. In other cases, uh, I mean, this month here, um, we've got twelve hundred pounds going out of the bank rather than coming into the bank. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got here uh, an opening balance. Uh, so what we do there is you look on the very, very last day of November uh, and you record the amount of money cleared funds in the bank. So what that's really saying is when we start this cash flow on the 1st of December, in this case, this photographer had £3,500 in the bank. Mm -hmm. uh, and directly below, uh, we have an overdraft facility. Now, not everybody has one uh, um, in terms of their, their business, but if you have a... Um, an overdraft facilitate a small one, whether it's two or three or four thousand pounds, and just record it there. If it's zero, then a zero will go in that uh, in that area there. Mm -hmm. um, and then what this sheet does is it looks at all those trading activities, all the sales in, all of the costs out, and it takes into account the starting balance and it starts to record the bank balance on every month. So we can see here in December our bank balance would be four thousand eight hundred eighty-five. And as we're going along, we can see it's going it's going down to 327, down to 500. Uh, and then towards the end of the year, typically a photographer will be busier, um, probably from, from, from the mid-year onwards, and it starts to pull back up and recover. The line below is overdraft. So that is um, just a, a standard overdraft that you might have, and that's taken from this cell here, but it just drops it in there. And then finally, right at the bottom of the sheet, we have something called headroom. Now, headroom, uh, what I want you to do is, is imagine walking into a cave. 
And as you stood in this case, all of the space around you, all of the space above your head, all the space to your left and right, this is cash. You've got, you, you, you've got plenty of space. You've got plenty of cash. You can go about running your business, uh, not worrying too much about the cash because you've got lots of space around you. Now, when, when headroom come, start, as a measure starts to come in is when things get tight, and that is when the cash starts to go. So, for example, uh, imagine walking through this cave, and as you're walking along, uh, the ceiling starts to come down towards you, the walls start to come in, uh, and eventually there is no room to walk, and that is when all of your headroom's gone. So, effectively, headroom is the available space in terms of money. Uh, you have to run your business. So your business can be overdrawn. If we look in this month here, uh, we're £910 overdrawn on our balance, but we have a £4,000 overdraft. So we've actually got £3,090 worth of headroom space to run our business. Um, I think we would probably all agree we'd much rather be in credit than in debit in our account. But in the situation, um, Cash in your business is the lifeblood, uh, and when it's gone, uh, it, it's, a, it's a big problem. So I'm just going to click on to the next sheet now. So this is exactly the same photographer, exactly the same set of numbers. But what I've done is I've I've done um, I've adapted this to reflect what things might look like for a photographer uh, once this kind of corona impact is happening. So we'll see here from March uh, through uh, April, May, June, July, a big drop in sales. These were, we were turning over five or six, to 7,000 pounds in these months. And it's dropping right down to uh, 1,400, 1,100, 1,200, 3,300. For some photographers right now, this could be zero. Um, it could be, uh, I mean, as we, we all know, we're, I guess, photography, as a broad and sweeping statement would be considered to be non-essential in terms of the kind of uh, things that we're doing right now. So it may be that uh, photographers have got work booked in, but they simply can't leave the house. You know, they have to stay home and, and they can't generate their sales. So this will actually, once again, tot up uh, those, uh, uh, those sales, the income for the month. Uh, and then down here, uh, I've left all of the expenses exactly as they are because what I want to try and demonstrate is that if if your sales diminish uh, and you don't do anything about your expenses or very little about your expenses, uh, the position changes very quickly. So we get down to the business end of the spreadsheet. We can see here uh, this line which has our total expenses. Uh, net flow to the bank. So December has gone from putting 1385 into the bank to 3000 out, 181 out, 3000 out, 3600 out, and it keeps in negative numbers all the way across. We still have our starting balance, we still have our uh, overdraft facility, uh, and our balance has gone from 4885, and you can see coming across, it kind of starts to disappear. Mm -hmm. And even with our overdraft at £4,000, let's go back to that headroom. Remember we talked about that cave, that space around you to actually work and make good decisions in your business knowing you have enough money. Uh, well, even with our overdraft, our headroom's gone from 8885 But by the time we get in here, we're, 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 we've used all of our overdraft and, and the money's gone. Uh, and by the time we actually get to uh, the end of the year, if we were to continue trading without the cash, which clearly we won't be able to, um, we're going to be, our balance, bank balance is going to be 15,000 overdrawn, which means we've got about 11,000 overdrawn on headroom. Mm -hmm. uh, now what I want to do is I'm just going to try and uh, switch uh, back to a different spreadsheet to, because this is very much the starting point and you know, things can be fixed. You can do some things about these. So I want to show you what I would do to try and do that. And uh, just, to, just to mention as well, uh, Simon, that these spreadsheets are uh, through the Think Tank web, uh, Facebook page uh, are going to be available for, for the photographers to come and plug their own numbers in and, um, and see where they are. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, at, at, at um, um, 387 and Photo Value, we, 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 we've been running something called Think Tank, which is, is really a collection of photographers, a lot of our customers from all around the world who 
who have expertise in certain areas. Um, they just might all be one kind of photographer. So we've recently done one on uh, headshots. So it, it's it's a, it's a place where people can come and they can um, get information and and hopefully help them through through the situation. Uh, and this spreadsheet, I'll I'll just explain a little bit more about it. But it's available for download. So. Uh, uh, the members of your trade association can go in and create their own cash flow if they don't have one. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so um, I've taken exactly the same spreadsheet with the corona effect added. So my sales have diminished uh, as they had before. But these are some of the things that I could do. So my my my, my rental, my mortgage is normally seven hundred and fifty a month, uh, and I've gone to my landlord and said, "Look, um, I've been with you for a long time." Uh, I need a payment holiday to enable me to uh, to get through this. And what I've seen, what I've done is I've agreed a payment holiday with my landlord to take out seven fifty a month for three months. So where the blue areas are, these are where the changes are. In terms of my monthly subscriptions, I've kind of gone and looked at all the things I pay for. Uh, I hear from a lot of photographers that they have numerous magazines that come every month, uh, and in a lot of cases they don't read them. So things like that, things that you can just, without even missing these things, you can actually turn them off or turn them down. So in our cases, in this case, I've taken from £75 uh, a month down to £30 a month. Uh, social media advertising, this photographer is generally spending about 250 a month. Now, there are going to be people out there who positively disagree with this statement, but for me, right now, in this moment in time where people can't even leave the house, I would be turning off my social media for those for those hard hit months, those two or three months or three or four months where nothing is moving. There's other things that you could be doing to to engage with your customers. You could be talking to them on the phone. You could see if they need any help in their world. There's all kinds of things that you could be doing to to keep yourself visible within your within your environment. But spending hard cash at this stage, I, I think, is something that you shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I am saying is, is as soon as we start to see the glimmer of that uh, market coming back is that you start to feed the cash in and you start to build back up again uh, until uh, you run back up to your 250 a month, if that's your number. Mm -hmm. um, uh, down here, uh, fuel. If uh, I, I don't know if, you, if you're anything like me, but at the moment I can't, really, can't drive my car anywhere, so so I'm not running up fuel bills on my car, so I've taken those down. Uh, I'm not posting anything, I've taken that out. Uh, I had some uh, a trip booked in here uh, for this photographer where he was going to kind of go and whether it's a seminar he was attending, he was going to have a bar bill, he was going to have some accommodation. Clearly, he doesn't need it, he can take that out. Um, I'm hearing, uh, in terms of I've got a software payment here, I'm hearing that uh, there are people like uh, uh, Photoshop where people are ringing up to say, look, we need to do something. They're going to say, look, we're going to help you by giving you two or three months where you don't pay for this, or we're going to defer the money. I don't know the absolute detail of it, but once again, th there's a real benefit into being the first person to make that call. G give them a call and say, look, I'm not going to bury my head in the sand. Um, I need to stop this turn it off for a while, or you need to help me. Hmm. Um, tax bill. Uh, for a lot of businesses, uh, particularly sole traders, which are, a lot of your members will p p possibly be, uh, you would generally pay your tax in January and in July. Now, there has been talk uh, in the news recently about deferring the July bill. Um, and this sheet was created before that happened. But, but, but effectively, what I wanted to try and do here is, is to say that when you have the bigger amounts in your cash flow, sometimes it can tip you over the edge into a situation where your headroom's gone. But by moving it one month or two months or going back to whether it's the tax man or your provider and say, look, I want to pay you. I just want to split it into three equal payments over the next three months, as in miss a month. And in this case, spread it over four months. Uh, and that helps massively. And finally, of course, uh, in terms of wages, um, it would not be unusual for a self-employed person to, to, to have to bear some of that. So by taking some of the wages out here, so I've taken the two and a half thousand down to 750 for three or four months and then gradually to feed it back in. Mm -hmm. uh, and what does that do? Well, um, 
in terms of the net flow to the bank, it reduces all that outflow. Um, it improves the bank balance, but more importantly, if you look at the headroom, and the headroom in this context is the most important line, as you can see, it remains positive all the way through. In some cases, in this month here, you know, we're only positive, cash positive by around 580 or 450, and then it starts to recover as the business returns. Mm -hmm. So, um, the cash flow is is a moment in time and you can change it and you can work with it and the most important thing is you can see it coming and that is the that is the main benefit you you know you're going to be fine until july or august or september and you've got time to try and fix that now what we've also done down here is that we've created a completely blank cash flow uh, and also i've created a home cash flow which is Pretty much just set the same document apart from income wise as you can see up here there's a lot less options uh, i mean typically for your home cash flow it may be the business it may be the money you take from your business or you may have a pension coming in or you may have a part-time job as well as being a photographer so that can be all recorded here for your income and this, this if this is a house obviously there's people got spouses wives or husbands if the you know that uh... absolutely it could be husbands and wives income uh, and, and here in terms of the descriptions, they're a little bit more household. So, you know, Sky TV or, or, or food shopping or, or things like that. One of the real ways that you can relieve pressure on your business is to kind of look at your home life and build a cash flow around your home life to say, well, um, you know, there's quite a few things here that we can turn off, suspend, not do. I mean, at the moment, I don't know about you, but, you know, you can't really go anywhere. You can't you can't go out to eat in a restaurant. You can't go to a pub. So so you, the amount of cash you actually need at home right now is going down anyway. Yeah. Uh, so here's a blank one here, and then finally we've created a, a spare business one and a spare cash and a spare home one. Um, mainly because I mean some people may have two distinct businesses um, or two distinct genres of photography. They may have an event business and they may have a, a studio. And they just want to kind of record these things separately. Yeah, so uh, this is available uh, to, uh, to to download and, and and fill in and, and use um, as you wish. No, that's that's really kind and thank you for that, uh, Sam. Because as I, th I think you said, I mean, we're not we're not trying to tell people to suck eggs. We, we you know a lot of the well, I'm sure that a lot of our uh, members already do cash flow forecasts and things like that. But for those who don't, I think what you actually said there, and the the the, the, the diamond in all of that uh, is that if you don't, you just don't know, you're unsure what's happening month to month. Where we do it here at the, the Institute, we, 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 put, we have our fixed overheads, we have a cash flow, because we know that some, some months, for example, this month, we, we actually lose money uh, because we have a lot of fixed overheads come out that, we're, that, that not, not are every month, but we know that in this month, we're gonna, we're gonna actually, our outgoings are, are more than our incomes. But if you can plan for it and you understand it through a, a year, then it makes, uh, it, it does help. Well, you, you can't do it without it in my eyes. But also uh, with what everybody's gonna go through over the next few months, if they can see that their tightest month or the, where they're gonna struggle for headroom is, is August, which I, I'm, I'm guessing, or July or August, which I think that's where we're actually gonna, it's gonna be the tightest for some people. Um, then if they can see it coming, they can do something about it now. They've got kind of eight, nine, 10 weeks to prepare for that uh, and put things in place. So that that's where, cash flow really comes into its own, doesn't it? Uh, well, I think it is. And, and in relation to the, the recent announcements in the news, there, there is some help out there for some people. Uh, it's, it, it's not going to get to everybody. But what seems to be consistent is it, the, 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 the help is not here tomorrow uh, for self-employed people. I think it was uh, June. Yeah. Or they would actually, and they'd see one lump of cash coming in, in one go. Um, so that's that, 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 that is a perfect example as to why you need a cash flow because you've got to try and manage your expenses between now and June, knowing that you know sometime in June this money is going to drop in and it may then take away the pressure, uh, or it may just defer the pressure for two months. You know, but you need to know that. Yeah, brilliant. And uh, besides cash flow, what? Because uh, obviously you've been involved in business a lot long time. If you could give any other advice or two pieces of advice for our members, besides obviously this cash flow is, is very, very important, what would that be? Well, I think that uh, there's 
um, a, a couple of things really. Um, I, I think that um, what a lot of your members are going to be seeing constantly is cancellations. People ringing up and saying, you know, uh, I know we were getting married in August or June or July and we want to cancel. Uh, or, you know, we were, we were having a, a portrait sitting and we want to cancel. Uh, and what I would encourage uh, them to do is to, is to really push for postponement. Um, now, um, I, I'm sure a lot of your guys will have, have already thought of this, but uh, I was talking with a photographer just, uh, just recently, uh, um, Bradley Bulmer from Stamp Plus Stamp 2, and he was saying that one of their strategies that is, is used within our, within our think tank environment is to say they're operating a, um, a floating diary. Uh, and, and his explanation of that is, is that you know, when somebody comes up, you know, rather than waiting for people to cancel, there may be a, a week or 10 days in advance. When it, when it becomes apparent, they're not going to be able to do that, that session because of the, the, the situation. They'll ring the customer up and say, look, clearly you're not gonna be able to leave the house a week on Tuesday. Um, let's get you dropped in for, for July. Let's get you dropped in for August, you know, mm -hmm. and actively move them forward. So they're, they're actively booking people in, they're actively moving people along. So it's this kind of constant moving people forward because at some point um, things are gonna get better because this is only a temporary situation. Yeah. And when, you know, the starting gun goes and, and you're ready to go again, you don't want to be looking at an empty diary. <laughs> but you've got to start from scratch. If you can take all of those people and just keep moving them forward and moving them forward constantly, yeah. uh, when you get to that point where it's good to go, you know, okay, your diary's not going to be perfect, but you may be looking ahead to your diary and think, well, you know, I would, I would normally have 10 jobs a week, but I've, I've got three or four booked in each week for the next four weeks and now I just need to fill the spaces yeah uh, so I, I, I think that uh, uh, don't cancel postpone uh, and I, I think uh, the, the advice given by Bradley of, of, of creating this this you know this this floating diary is, is a very good way of uh, planning for, for the return to prosperity mm. yeah it's a good piece of advice and, and stay positive as well I mean you, you, you can't you know, as, as down as I'm sure a lot of people feel and under pressure as people feel, you know, when you're phoning these people or you're moving or using this floating diary or booking people in, you've got to, you've got to stay positive and excited and because they're booking for an experience, certainly with, um, with social photography, the advertising guys, we, we, a large part of our membership is, uh, commercial photography, uh, but I would say the same to them as well. You know, that it, it's keeping contact with, uh, your, your, your clients and keep on the phone to them and stay positive and, and, and keep moving it through the diary. Just don't cancel it, as you say. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. So the, the uh, spreadsheets are going to be available in the think tank. I'm going to put a link on when we put this out um, to, so people can uh, uh, find think tank and find the, find the spreadsheets and, and, and hopefully download them. So Simon, that, that's, that's brilliant. Any final words before we go or? Uh, just really that, um, uh, within within think tank, there's lots of subjects. You know, some of those are about sales and marketing. Some of them are about kind of um, just people's well-being, really. And I think uh, the thing is that is coming out of all this. I mean, us, we're, ourselves at uh, the institute are pumping that, out so much content, as is like the honest photography, as is the think tank and NPA and, and all these organisations. And and I think if, if anything's to come out of this, is that the, the information that's now readily available and they and they you know, the amount of information and support you can get is, is probably more than ever in the history of uh, our industry. And uh, it's all accessible and, you know, uh, people are opening the doors uh, to, to everybody for them to be able to, to, to help and survive. Because people like yourself at, at Fort Value at 3XM, of course, when all this kind of reboots and the, the start gun, as you call it, goes off again, um, it's in all our interest that all our members and the photographers and your customers are in healthy shape, ready to go, go all health for leather, uh, coming up till Christmas and into the new year. Absolutely, we can we can only ever be as good as our customers. So uh, that that's really kind of you know how we think about it, and we, we really make it our mission to try and to to try and make them uh, you know help them as much as we possibly can. Yeah, brilliant, Simon. Thank you so much. Say hello to Ron for me. I pass him on, pass my love on to him, and uh, <laughs> we'll hopefully speak to you uh, very soon. Okay.